So, here's how we're doing this. We are looking into the future. We're pulling out the crystal ball. We're looking into the future. We've met up with some fantastic psychics. And we are going to tell you who is going to be the head coach at your favorite university in the SEC West in well, not necessarily who the head coach is. We're going to tell you where the current head coach will be. Well, I'm going to tell you who the coach will be as well. Oh, so, oh, it's a, hey, it's going to get fun. This is going to be crazy. So, um, let's go ahead and start with you. Let let's uh, Alabama is the the first one up. Let's okay. let's save them for a little bit. Is okay. that good? I don't I don't know why, but okay. So, let's move to Arkansas. Currently, Sam Pittman is the head coach. Chris, I'll let you go ahead and start us. Sam Pittman is going to continue to be the head coach in five years. He will still be there. They got too many damn coaches on the books. They've got to get some money off. Sam Pittman has done this cheaper than – I would venture to say his contract is cheaper than every other coach in the SEC. I don't know that. I haven't looked into that. It's uh, um, it's like a hair maybe, over $3 million. Yeah. Maybe Missouri's paying – oh, no, then if he's just barely making $3 million, Yeah, Missouri he, pays more. He's the lowest paid coach in the SEC. Um, I think they are, they've got to regenerate the funds. Uh, they're in Arkansas. And I also think give him a couple of years with – a uh, a supporting cast of of offensive coordinator, defense coordinators that I, I kind of like a lot, a whole lot. If you don't lose those guys to other head coaching jobs, I think he can win some ball games, improve that to where he keeps his job, but not nearly good enough to ever get a big boy, big boy job where you'd leave Arkansas for. I am looking at it a little bit differently. Um, I don't think that the Arkansas uh, brass – is patient enough to deal with this. I think that some of the coaches that he has currently uh, may end up getting other jobs, may get, you know, and who knows, this could end up being like an LSU-type rebuild, but it is tough to get players at Arkansas. I don't think they are patient enough to wait around for him, and I think he will end up back as an offensive line coach somewhere else in the SEC within five years. Uh, we disagree I, there. I think that Brian Harson from Boise State is going to be the next head coach at Arkansas by 2025. Now, it could be before that. It could be right at 2025. We'll see. Uh, but remember, Arkansas has got pocketbooks, man. They they got money. And while right now every, nobody wants to spend it, in five years they'll be all right with spending it if they're not getting the return that they want from their football program Brian Harson, he's the coach at Boise. Like the Boise staff had to be furloughed at one point, like just a, a month or so ago. Like it, it's tough to do that at a smaller school. Yeah, he's a Boise guy and whatnot, but he coached at Arkansas State. He's got ties to the state. I think he would go to Arkansas for some of that big Jerry Jones money. Uh, I'll I'll take Brian Harson to be the coach in twenty twenty five. So just, that's fine. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do right here. Auburn, let's move into this. You want me to go first on Auburn? Sure. I don't think you're going to like this. Look, obviously, every single year, Gus Malzahn is on the hot seat, right? At some point over the next five years, remember, that buyout goes down every single year, right? He got a big-time contract extension after the 2017 season. So, 2018, 2019, now he's got five years left on that deal. Once you get to about two years left, not going to be a whole lot of money left on the on the contract. So you'll be able to buy him out at that point, right? I mean, they could buy him out right now. They were talking about doing it just a year ago. So we'll see. I think Dave Aranda is going to be pretty successful at Baylor. I think Auburn is going to find a way to pry Dave Aranda away, and I think Gus Malzahn will get bought out, and he's going to go be a G5 head coach somewhere. I don't think... He's going to go back to being an offensive coordinator, whatever. I think as soon as he gets on the open market, he will be a head coach somewhere, kind of the same way Hugh Freeze was a head coach at Liberty, right? That's my thoughts on it. I think Auburn ends up hiring Dave Aranda by 2025. Who have you got? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be upset with that. I wouldn't be disappointed with that. I hope Dave Aranda is a home run hire. Uh, I don't see Arkansas or Auburn ever going back to a defensive-minded coach ever again. They they pride themselves on wanting to be offensively, 
you know, creative and, and, and innovative. I think they're just always going to have an offensive guy. Uh, I actually think this is a relationship that finds a way to work itself out. I know that's crazy. I know that one year into his new big extension, they wanted to fire him. And then he beat Bama. And I, I think if he beats Bama every other year, which, you know, beat Georgia every other year, I, I think he saves that job. And, and I think they find a way to be very happy with that. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I think a lot that. of their happiness ter- depends on what happens at Alabama. Okay. When Alabama's winning national titles every year and competing for national titles every year, then, then you look at your coach a whole lot differently than when Alabama finishes 18th in the country, you look at your coach a whole lot different. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, let me I, jump I just think, I think they compare themselves to Bama way too much. And, and I, I just see things differently. I think they find a way to make it work simply because it's just so much money. And, and I don't think that contract's going to stay the way it is. I think if he beats Bama and Georgia next year, somehow, okay, then, then I'm, I'm hey, telling you, another he'll, extension? he'll get another extension. <laughs> so they wanted to fire him yeah. last year. They sat pat this year. They'll give him another extension next year. And the money will just be so much that they just can't ever fire. Well, I mean, cheers to that. That twenty twenty five would put him at Auburn for twelve straight seasons. Yeah, and so I mean, we'll see. Um, let's see. Damian Estrada said, "I don't see why the leagues are planning on having a season if people can't be at the games." I mean, don't we as fans pay money to the leagues and the players? So if we can't be there, why have sports at all? Uh, because you can still have it on television. Wild Bill said, "Can we all just get along?" <laughs> oh no, that wouldn't be fun at all. No, that's not what this is about. Uh, we do have a, a lot more people watching now. For those that missed it, our big announcement earlier, uh, we are uh, going to work for SBR, Sportsbook Review. We will be doing their college football coverage. So all of our college football coverage this year will be on SBR's uh, YouTube page on their website, sportsbookreview.com. Uh, but we will be posting all of it over at winningcureseverything.com, and we'll still be doing our show it just won't be college football content. It'll be NFL, et cetera. NFL so, and everything else going on. You got it. So we've we've hit on Arkansas. We've hit on Auburn. Let's go ahead and knock out Alabama. Uh, Nick Saban, I believe, by 2025, will be riding off into the pasture. He will be over at the lake in Georgia, uh, riding on his ski boat, doing all you know, playing golf, whatever, hanging out with his grandkids. I think Mario Cristobal will be the new head coach at Alabama. Um, it, it is between. It is between Cristobal and I think Pruitt, but I we'll do the SEC East tomorrow. Um, spoiler: I I like Pruitt in that job. I think he's going to be really, really good. So I don't foresee him leaving it, but we'll see. Uh, I think that Mario Cristobal will come back down to the South uh, after he, you know, does some some good things with Oregon. I don't foresee him. Let me doing ask a you Dabo this: thing. You're you're working under an assumption that he's just going to dominate the Pac-12. No. What, no. what happens if what happens if he is an eight and four team in the Pac twelve consistently? If he is eight and four consistently, uh I mean because that's be what a, Oregon's been consistently. Uh, to to be fair, I mean he what did they do last year? Twelve and two? Like Okay, that was last yeah. year. You're looking at last year. You just assume last year's gonna be every year? No, I don't think it's gonna be every year. That's what I'm saying. Like I don't think he's gonna do what Dabo did at Clemson. Which is why I think it's more likely that he will leave as opposed to Jeremy Pruitt or whatever. I think Oregon will pay uh, quite a bit of money. I don't Once think again, they will pay. So what let's say he's nine Alabama. and three. Let's say he averages nine and three between now and then. Okay. Do you want him at Bama? Is he still your number one guy at Bama? Yeah. That's insane. I'd love that. Who Who in the world would you expect them to go get? I don't know. I don't See know. that that's the thing. Like they, there's not another Saban. There's not another Dabo. No, uh, there's not another Urban Meyer. Like it, those are those are the three, right up there at the top, right. So aside from them, like anybody has just as good of a shot to do whatever at, at Alabama as anywhere else. So you know who I think is a lot better than him. I mean, a lot better coach than him. Who's that? It's a guy I don't I don't really like him very much. I I think it's Brian Kelly. At Kelly's. Already like older, I, I don't, 
That's insane. You're looking at age for coaching is just insane. Well, I mean, we're looking at age in five years. Okay. So, like, it, it, so, so, what do you tell me? What you think? And I'm gonna tell you what Brian Kelly's age is right now. All right, I think Brian Kelly is a substantially better coach than than Mario Cristobal. He's he's at his school where his kids have to read. Okay, they have to be they have to be not marginally intelligent. They have to be pretty high intelligent. Yeah, and and he is at his ceiling. The fact that he competed for a national championship and went undefeated with the schedule that they have almost every year is pretty remarkable to me. And I think if he got a hold of an Alabama or an Ohio State or an Oklahoma or an LSU or a school of that nature, he would be exactly what Clemson and Bama are. He is, uh, let's see, his birthday is October 25th. 1961, so he is 58 years old. Um, that would put him at 63. 63, okay. In 2025. That so, is not very old at all. No, it's not. Uh, that that could be reasonable. I mean, you bring him I just think forward. he's a way better coach. If you told me I could have Mario Cristobal right now or in five years, or I get Brian Kelly right now or in five years, I think Brian Kelly is a world. Who's the, who's the best coach that I think might leave their program? in five years or, or less that could coach one of the top three or four schools in the country. I think he's at the top of that list That's simply because he has faced those guys and he realizes I'll never be able to beat them. I'll never be able to beat them no matter what I do because ACT, SAT requirements to get into my school are just can't, I can't get that talent here. Um, let me jump in here. Joseph said, uh, big flash Gordon identifying talent. Nice. Don't let Teddy covers get you locked in on 1990 stories. <laughs> no worries. No worries. I love Teddy. Uh, and then he said, did Chris just say they have to know how to count without using their toes? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a Southern thing. <laughs> uh, Michael said he's a better coach and a fellow Libra. Uh, yes. It, look, I was looking at it from an age difference and looking in five years. Uh, I didn't realize that Brian Kelly was only 58 years old. Yeah, if I had the choice. I would take Mike Norvell right now over Mario Cristobal. And I don't know what he's going to be able to do at, at Florida State. I just I just don't. I, I'll buy into Mario Cristobal when he can dominate a Pac-12. That's as about as bad a football as we've seen in the last four years. Uh, Damian said, why not hire Urban Meyer? Uh, oh, Urban, I wouldn't touch Urban. There's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of bad blood between Urban and, and the University of Alabama. For one, that, that um, heart and brain defect or whatever he keeps saying that he's got. Yeah. When we left Florida for a heart problem, he left he left Ohio State for a brain problem. I, I don't I don't know what else could go wrong in five years, but I, I Alabama's not going to be desperate. No, they won't coach. be desperate. So, no, so I think plenty of out. good young coaches you're even thinking of right now. Yeah. I mean, what happens if Satterfield com- makes you know makes a playoff with Louisville? Or you not know, even a player. Like, like what if he makes that a, a perennial ten win team? You know, I mean, there's yeah, like that's that's knows. what I'm saying. Like you're the reason you can't pick a coach now for a school like that or any of these schools. Well, it's because these are all we, hypothetical. So it's you have no idea. Yeah. I just want to tell you what I think these guys will be doing that are there right now. Are they going to be there? Or are they not? Wild Bill said, "I agree about Pruitt. Is Phil Steele out yet? Uh, great college football source. No, Phil Steele will not be Phil out Steele's, until August. Yeah, it's coming out. Uh, when in uh, in like the first week of August." Okay, yeah, it's bumped back. I knew yeah, it was bumped back bumped a lot. Uh, however, all the other – Athlon, Lindy's, Street and Smith, all that stuff is already out. So, okay. it's it's weird to have it out. Um, well, I, but, don't know. don't ask me what I think about Pruitt because I put my foot in my mouth two years in a row. I'm probably going to do it a third, but – Hey, it's all good. Hey, you just do what you do. Uh, Michael said Urban Meyer is an all-time D-bag. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's all right, move – Alabama would be great, though. They don't give a shit. <laughs> hey, just win, baby. That's all it is. Uh LSU. Let's move on to that. That uh, guy's that guy's not leaving there at, unless he leaves in a body bag. That's yeah. This is not a Tuberville situation or no. anything like that. When he was at Ole Miss and said you'd have to pull me out of here in a pine box or whatever. Uh, Ed Orgeron will still be the head coach at LSU. He will, in he will be dancing his body to his grave on site at at LSU. I don't know where his family cemetery is, but he will be buried in Baton Rouge. Yeah. Yeah, now you got that right. Uh, Wild Bill said that new coach at Arkansas is stealing Oklahoma boys 
Uh, they should be much improved, maybe seven and six. I, this I year. think Sam Pittman's going to be just fine. It will take a while because they got no time. I mean, that is a That's, complete rebuild. Now, yeah, it's a rebuild. I also said Louisville was a train wreck and it was going to take a while to get good. And Satterfield made them way better than I thought. And uh, who, uh, Kansas State, I thought, yeah, was climate. going to take a while. And apparently there's talent there. And I just didn't realize it because the coaching staff at both those places was just so far gone. I don't foresee him doing what those two did. I think Pittman's going to be just fine. I love Kendall Browse. I think Odom is a great DC. I, I this is this is the staff I would have hired if I had carte blanche to hire anybody, and the AD was going to stay out of me. Those are the two guys I would have went out and got. Okay, All right, so we we both agree on LSU. Uh, oh yeah, LSU is so the easiest we, one in this thing. Yeah, we <laughs> got Alabama, Arkansas, Auburn, and LSU. Um, let's move on to Ole Miss. About to get to the fun ones. Yep. Lane Kiffin is uh, is there right now. I You want me to go ahead? Sure. Okay. Lane Kiffin, I think, will be gone to a better job at this point. Um, that's not to say that Ole Miss is a bad job, but I think he gets hired at a big-time school because at that point, it, everything is shifting to where um, social media matters, where the, the coach has to be personable, the coach has to be able to get along with the players really well, like all this kind of stuff, right? It's, it's kind of shifting even more so right now than it ever has, and Kiffin is like the perfect coach for that. He can recruit. He has the uh, – he's got the skills. He's got the, uh, the, the offensive firepower, the offensive uh, uh, philosophy to be able to win, and he's adaptable, and he's still insanely young. So I think he's going to move to a bigger job eventually. Now – with that said, I think Ole Miss is going to end up hiring Billy Napier. I think Billy Napier from Louisiana Lafayette is going to ta- – that's who I thought was going to get it the first time. You think Billy's not going to get a job for five more years, or you think Lane's going to do such a good job where he gets I, pulled away in two? I think Billy's Lane could get pulled away in like two three or three years. years now. I, no. I don't – look, Billy Napier had has his option of Baylor, of Arkansas, a couple other ones that he was actually – offered this year at Mississippi State. He was offered these jobs and didn't want them. Now, he he's comfortable staying at Louisiana for a while. I mean, he's he's making over a million a year. I think he's going to be just fine. Um, you know, I, I think Billy Napier is going to end up being the next coach in Oxford. So, that's that's my thought process on it. Um, Lane's going to be there. Lane you is think going Lane will still be, be there in five years? I, I fully believe, I you know me, the guy who had it all and lost it all, I think that second time round, I think that guy is way more loyal. I I really do. I and really do. Right. I think I think everything Lane has gone through up until this point in his life, I don't think he's going to jump ship quickly at all. I think he has changed jobs every year and a half to every two years like clockwork because he either got ran off or, or, or went for greener pastures and then got fired because it just wasn't good enough. And And I think – now that he is in a big boy job, it might not be USC, Bama, Notre Dame big, but it's a big boy power five SEC football job. And if he can win at a competitive level, win eight, nine games every year, every fourth year, get to double digit wins and try to get to an SEC title game, I, I think he could be there the rest of his life if he wants to. I'm not saying he has to be there the rest of his life but I damn sure don't think he's jumping at the first job that comes to him that's bigger than this. I think he is going to try to lay down some roots. I think he wants to see an entire recruiting class come under him and through him, and and I think he is going to be very picky about the next job he takes. You might be right. You might be right. Damian jumped in. He said, what about Jim Harbaugh? I mean, his time as Michigan head coach is likely over, so why not sign him? Harbaugh... Ain't going to the SEC for nothing. That ain't happening. No, nah, so I don't know about it. he would never come to the SEC. He ain't going to Bama. Well, no, he ain't going to Bama. But I, I'll I'll tell you this: he has said so many derogatory things about the SEC since he's been the head coach at Michigan. Yeah, but those are all are those are all pointed at the big boys of the SEC. I would bet your ass he would take a South Carolina job just to stick it in. The butt of all those big boys. Let me take a little school and let me find some big boy and let me make them fools. Okay. Okay. 
I, I would, I would see him at a, at a Missouri or a South Carolina or an old man, just to, he could go, I would see him go to a smaller tier school just to fight the big boys. Cause he likes picking fights with guys bigger than him. Now you get that right. Uh, he, Wild, he has always done it. Wild Bill said, uh, that's going to be a good fit at Ole Miss. Kiffin has matured. Yeah. I yeah. think, I think Kiffin's a completely different person. And if he jumps at a job in five years, it'll be, a, it'll be the wrong decision. And I think he has learned from some of his mistakes and he realizes now I'm making real good money. He could he could be king of Oxford. I'm not going to go ride somebody else's coattail somewhere else. He tried that, and it just hasn't worked out. And and personality wise, I think he fits really well at Oxford. No, a hundred percent. There's outside of Ed Orgeron at LSU. There's not a better fit. I don't know in the country. Yeah, you might be right about that. Um, let's move on to Mississippi State. I think Mike Leach will still be the coach in five years. He ain't going anywhere because nobody bigger than State is calling him. State will always pay enough to keep him. Yep, I, I think you're right. Now, it, his his tenure did not get started off on the uh, on the best foot, but uh, I think you can find a way to get past that. I think they he's all win knew games. that he was going to yep. run some kids off when he first got there because his his philosophy and how he does things is just going to wear people wrong. He's, he's never going to the next guy, but. The guys that come in to play for him are coming to play for him. So you got a one year weirdness. Everybody that's there this year that plays for him this year will be fine, and any new person that comes in will be fine. Yeah, now you uh, you got that right. He they've gotten quite a few transfers. Uh, Michael said never been, but heard Ole Miss campus is beautiful. Would be cool to check out. Yeah, it's it's definitely worth checking. No, out. It's beautiful, and the Grove is cool. I mean, it is a cool place to be on on a football game weekend. I mean, it's yeah. It's, it's it's really really nice. It definitely wear is. sunglasses, brother. Yeah, you got that right. The talent is hot. <laughs> um, let's go to Texas A&M. This will be the last one, and then we'll get out of your hair. Uh, I think Jimbo's still there in five years. No doubt. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that is a that's another fit that I think just works really well. Yeah, now, I mean, Jimbo is not a he's not a Texas you know oil rig whatever kind of guy. But he seems to fit in well. Um, I mean, I Here's like. The thing. I didn't know that he was going to fit in well in 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 uh, Florida um, State. Florida State, and he just he seems to just be that fifty year old man that can kind of walk into any room and have a conversation with anybody. Yeah, and you're a rich really oil tycoon. All right, you wrestle gators on the weekends. All right, you know you you, you grew up you know poor and 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 play basketball with you know. A uh, milk crate, uh, you know, hung to a telephone pole. I can handle. Like he can talk to anybody. He's maybe the most. Per- I would consider him like the mayor of the SEC. He just he's the most likable guy. Out outside of the fact that if he's your rival, you hate him. But yeah, just he's he has take turned, who he works for out of it. He can walk into any room and hang with anybody. He has turned the the recruiting around for sure. Uh, so we'll see what they do. I mean, this is the gear that he really needs to. Obviously, he's got a. We really need contract. this season to play out for A and M. Yeah, as much as I want LSU to do well, I that they were my pick last year, and you were a hundred percent right. That team is a little too young, and that schedule was way too brutal. Hundred percent on both of those. Yep. That schedule sets up beautiful. Beat LSU, beat Auburn, beat beat Alabama. If you can win two of those three games. And you're this good. It's gonna be a hell of a year for you, man. You got that right. I mean, you you win two of those three, and you're gonna be eleven and one. I yes, mean, basically. I, be, I believe that. I believe that. Um, Damian Estrada said, "What about Mark Tressman? I mean, the XFL isn't coming back, so why not give him an SEC job?" Uh, Tressman doesn't have any ties down here, and Tressman in the SEC, it it's all about recruiting. Yeah, it didn't have about, ties. Mississippi State's got the one coach that don't give a shit about recruiting. Okay. Yeah. Now he does have a staff that cares, though, and that. That matters. I don't know that Tressman. He, he doesn't care. No. Tressman would not fit well in the SEC. That is a, that is a Big Ten guy. He needs to be an OC at Penn State or somewhere. You got that right. Uh, Michael said, Jimbo's a really good guy. I wouldn't want anyone else leading the Aggies. Uh, and then he said, can't wait to see what happens after Mond. Uh, Mond should be a lot better, but I think there's better out there. The, the, I would tell you, if they don't do well this year, I, I wonder what kind of leash Mond's going to have because I think that talent, the talent on that team is pretty stacked. 
if Mond underperforms, he better have a backup that he can sling in there and give a shot to. You don't want to waste this season. No. With that schedule and, and the talent that's on that team, don't burn it because you're married to a quarterback. Listen, I, I worship at the feet of Les Miles, but but we lost many a game because he was married to the guy he started with, and he just would never pull the trigger. Yeah. Um, and 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 I, I don't think Jimbo is that. Um, I Jimbo like wants to win, man, and he's going to do like whatever he needs to. I love Jimbo a lot. Look, that was a newly single man that just got a $10 million deal. Woo! That's Colin place. Stason was rocking for that gentleman. $75 million over 10 years. That's a lot of money. That is Put a lot of money. Put those boots on, those spurs. You got that, that is a man about town. Get his cowboy hat on, all that good stuff. All right. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that's popped up. So, no. so we'll go on and get out of here. Tomorrow we'll do the SEC East. Uh, we'll have to do it from my office. We're going to go live at 3 p.m. Central tomorrow so, everybody join us again. For those that missed it, the announcement today was that we are moving our college football coverage over to Sportsbook Review. That's right. We're going to work for SBR. Uh, we will be doing all of our college football picks, our opening and closing line stuff. All, all of our talk about college football is going to be on sportsbookreview.com and over on their YouTube page for this college football season. So, starting in August, all the way through... I mean, really February for uh, recruiting and whatnot. Uh, we're going to be doing everything over at SBR on that. Now, we are still going to have our show for NFL, NBA, all the other sports that are happening. We're still going to be doing Winning Cures Everything, but our college football content will be over at SBR. We, uh, we appreciate those guys. We are looking forward to the opportunity. So, uh, we, have, we have agreed to terms. We are getting ready to rock and roll with them. We still got a few things to work out, but that is the plan right now, starting in August college football coverage over at sportsbookreview.com. Right now, the show, this show, Winning Cures Everything, is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find us at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you are subscribed to the podcast. Make sure you are subscribed on all the different live platforms, Periscope, Twitch, uh, Facebook, YouTube, etc. Share the show out. Tell you, buddies, uh, Devin CFB said, can't wait to uh, when I hit 18 so I can start betting on teams. Hey, cheers to you, brother. I think it's I think it's 21, but. It not for offshore. Not for offshore? All right, well, there you go. Devin, hop well, in, brother. it didn't used to be. I wasn't 21. There you go. <laughs> we'll see. Either way, go check them out, sportsbookreview.com, winningcureseverything.com. We love you guys. Thank you so much for hopping in. You help drive the conversation. We appreciate everybody that jumps in the chat every single day. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Leave a nice review. And as always, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.